Uh, Richard, I know uh, right now you're a fan of that old uh, cliche, cash is trash, but I'll offer you another one. Uh, sell in May and go away. Do you dare take a profit at the moment? How much longer can this bull run go? Yes, that's a good one. It's usually May is when you have a pretty good uh, first half of the year and then uh, everybody goes off for the summer. But with all the lockdowns we have at the moment, who knows whether we're even going to have a summer. So um, all those cycles may be interrupted this year. Uh, but I think at the moment we are seeing a continuation of the momentum that we've been seeing previously. Um, you know, we've got uh, the Fed, which seems to be willing to keep rates low. We've got pent up demand in the trillions, pent up consumer demand. Uh, we've got some reasonably stable economic figures coming out. So I think all in all, the market's going to take these good pieces of news to heart rather than maybe some of the risks that uh, are still lurking in the background. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be hearing from the Fed a little later this week. How difficult is their job at the moment? Because sooner or later, monetary policy is going to have to be normalised. How does it happen without tanking equity prices? Well, this is the conundrum, isn't it? I think the, the part of the problem is the Fed, with its zero interest rate policy, has basically lost its authority. It now cannot increase without causing a severe uh, crisis in the market. And I think that really the bullish picture that I painted a moment ago uh, could be turned on its head if the Fed say, well, we're now going to taper or we're now going to uh, increase rates because the markets have been relying on the sugar rush for the Fed for so long that the Fed are in intolerable position. Um, I don't know about you, but every time I go to the supermarket these days, prices have gone up uh, and are going up quite a bit. So there is inflation out there. Um, but one wonders whether the inflation that we're likely to see can be catered for by a half point, quarter point move up, uh, rather than a five or 10 percent move up, as we saw in the Volcker years. Richard, you mentioned earlier how, given so many people are still under lockdown, so we really don't know what will happen next, the uncertainty there. Um, right now, the question of the day from our MLive colleagues, how will Japan's emergency affect assets? A third round of state of emergency for Japan. So I didn't quite get the question. How would Japan... State of emergency affect assets. Whether it's locally, we have seen the Nikkei really take a hit lately or perhaps even regionally and globally. Well, I think what we're seeing uh, is a series of cycles in different markets. You know, Japan is one. Uh, we're seeing a cycle of uh, increased uh, COVID cases in Europe, and then they come off. The UK now seems to be pretty sanguine. Um, the US seems to be on the back of the curve, or at least the latest curve at the moment. So we're seeing these waves move, I think, across the markets. Um, they don't really seem to be impacting the markets that much, except locally. And then when you have a hit, um, uh, as you might see in India at the moment with the crisis they have there. Um, when the COVID crisis eases, the markets then recover. So I think we're in a rather strange position in terms of the fact you've got this overall uh, economic wave that uh, tends to be uh, quite positive uh, post-COVID recovery, but also many countries that are still in the thick of it um, and have real issues. So uh, I I think it's very difficult to see what's going to happen until these particular mini cycles start to coalesce. Uh, but at the moment, I kind of look towards the U.S. as my guide, because clearly if the U.S. market comes off, everybody's going to get hurt. Richard, I see in your notes that you're less positive on China. I wonder why, because all of this conversation of us saying that, you know, the virus is a factor, Beijing has it very well contained, and the economic recovery there seems pretty strong. Yes, economics good. Uh, market, I'm not so, so sure will be good because the authorities there do have a handle on interest rates. Um, and they have been tightening recently, not necessarily through rates, but through other measures. Um, and they're very strongly aware of the fact that uh, twice in the last decade, they've allowed the markets to move ahead, indeed, even encouraged the markets to move ahead. Um, but that's only led to some severe downturns. So I think the Chinese uh, authorities will be a lot more careful this time. I don't think they want the markets to run away in the bubble. I think they want to hold back. 
Uh, I think that's good economics. Uh, there are clearly some issues out there that, that we will never know the depths of, but while wrong, clearly, there's uh, an enormous hole in the accounts there. It's a big company. It's going to be a big hole. So I think they have a number of issues to deal through, and I think that's probably going to keep a lid on market progress compared to other parts of the world. Uh, Richard, I just want to quickly get your thoughts on Bitcoin. Back above 49,000 this morning, it's put on about 4% just in the course of uh, this morning's broadcast. But I know that some of your clients are hearing about, talking to you about it as being one of the big risks. What are they saying? Well, usually they're the clients who aren't in it, of course. But um, I, I, uh, obviously the general view is, uh, you know, that it's, it's famous for being famous. It's going up because it's going up. Um, it seems difficult to see uh, really any fundamentals in it. Uh, but we've also seen the same in Tesla. So we do have these mini bubbles out there, which are now getting quite large in terms of market cap. You know, we're looking at Bitcoin well over a trillion of market cap. Now, if they reach three or four trillion and then had a meltdown, we could easily see some systemic risk coming through the market. So there are a number of unknown unknowns out there, maybe slightly known unknowns. Uh, Bitcoin is one. Obviously, if Tesla came off, that would be one. Um, we've got the inflation issue and how the markets are going to address that. That's another one. So there are some clear risks out there. But I think for the moment, the markets can tend to look at the positive side of things as we come out of COVID uh, and we'll hold on to that for a while.